Mr. Feller takes one. Thank you, Robert. Two topics, please. The climate talks in Copenhagen appear to be deadlocked or, or at least in some, some trouble. Is that how the White House, White House sees it? What's your take? Well, I think the White House sees uh, where we are on those talks much like the White House saw these talks several days ago. Uh, when uh, Mark asked me that question, and uh, I said I thought there were a number of outstanding issues uh, that were uh, present then and are certainly present now. We have, I think you know, have put uh, an aggressive range uh, on the table for a reduction uh, in uh, carbon dioxide from our economy. Uh, we have, in conjunction with uh, others, set forward uh, some short-term financing goals uh, that we believe internationally can be met to help uh, some developing countries. We've worked with India and China to bring them along in enunciating uh, strong targets for reducing the carbon intensity in their economies. Um, one of the issues that the President and the team in Copenhagen are concerned with is, uh, is the transparency of any operational agreement, ensuring that uh, what, uh, what, is, what makes an agreement operational uh, is able to be uh, verified so that people are living, we know people are living up to those agreements. Uh, that's, uh, I know, an issue that is yet to be worked out, and it's uh, an issue of great concern to, uh, to the United States. Can you offer some, uh, some specific detail based on current events there about what the President specifically wants to get done? Does he feel that his, his stay there and his time there can help bring some of these issues to the Well, look, I think that... Uh, uh, I think leaders representing developing and developed nations uh, all over the world coming to Copenhagen uh, gives, uh, gives an opportunity for some of those issues to be resolved and a breakthrough to happen. The President uh, is, uh, is hopeful uh, that his presence can help that uh, uh, and hopeful that, again, we leave Copenhagen with a strong operational uh, agreement. Uh, even as we work towards uh, uh, something even stronger in the future. I also wanted to ask you quickly about health care. Is the President as confident today as he was yesterday that he'll get 60 votes in the Senate for uh, health care reform? I don't think his mood has changed on that at all, no. What about Senator Ben Nelson? Is he confident about it? Is Senator Nelson confident? No, I, I don't pre is President Obama confident? That I, again, I, you know, I, I think he's uh, had conversations with uh, with uh, a number of different senators. Obviously, was, uh, the caucus was here yesterday. Uh, I don't think his mood has changed. Yes, what does the President think of Ben Bernanke getting named Person of the Year by Time Magazine? And is the President concerned about some of these proposals in Congress that the Fed thinks would rein in its independence? Well, uh, I have not talked to the President directly about uh, the awarding of Time's Man of the Year. Uh, person of the year. So, uh, uh, I guess uh, you, writ large, uh, didn't repeat uh, from several years ago. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously uh, the president has uh, uh, confidence in Chairman Bernanke's uh, leadership at the Fed, uh, which is why in the, in August he renominated him. Uh, I do think that. Uh, the economic team here, uh, the actions of uh, members on Capitol Hill, uh, and the actions of the Fed, we all know help stave off uh, a much more serious uh, financial crisis that, quite frankly, seemed like a very real possibility earlier in the year. Uh, and that uh, uh, through those coordinated actions and through some of those tough uh, and even unpopular decisions, we've pulled our economy back from the brink. We're now on a road toward uh, rebuilding that economy and eventually uh, economic recovery. Uh, so uh, I, I have not talked to him, but uh, I think his actions and the actions of, of many others uh, certainly helped uh, stave off something far worse. Did the administration plan to speak out on some of these proposals? Um, such as the ones that would require I'd have to take a look at the individual. Uh, I, 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 I don't have anything on, uh, on some of the individual bills. I think 
Our focus obviously is on getting a very strong financial reform package now through the Senate, uh, working with Chris Dodd uh, and Richard Shelby in order to make that happen, uh, to set those new rules of the road and ensure that what happened uh, and cause this great crisis doesn't happen again. Chair. Um, <clears throat> just wondering what your response is, kind of a back and forth going on between the former head of the Democratic Party, Dr. Howard Dean, and, and the White House on health care reform. Um, this morning, he said that while there are many good things in the bill, there comes a point uh, when there are enough bad things that he, that he would, that would lead him to, uh, to oppose it, and he said, the lack of the public option, a mandate covering, uh, requiring people to get coverage, a fine in which 27 percent of the fine goes to insurance companies, uh, means that this is, quote, an insurance company's dream. Uh, and I was just wondering um, what your response was. If this is an insurance company's dream, I think the insurance companies have yet to get the memo. Uh, insurance companies have spent hundreds of millions of dollars lobbying against this legislation. They've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on television ads. Uh, on networks and cable stations uh, throughout our television uh, to try to kill reform. Um, I don't, if this is such a if this is such a good deal for them, uh, I'm not entirely sure why they're fighting it. Uh, look, let me go through some of the things that I think Dr. Dean said on uh, Good Morning America this morning that quite simply weren't true. One. Uh, nobody's gonna, nobody, will be, nobody will be required to purchase something they can't afford. There are hardship ship exemptions uh, and subsidies uh, based on income levels that help people afford insurance. I don't have the slightest idea where the fact of 27 uh, percent came from. He went on later in the interview to discuss the notion that uh, pre, the legislation contains or no longer contains anything that addresses pre-existing conditions. Uh, that's simply flat out wrong. Later in the interview, he said that uh, he didn't see any cost control in the bill when every health economist that's evaluated the bill uh, says that any idea that's out there to contain costs is actually contained in the bill. So, I, you know, I, I don't know what piece of legislation he's reading. Let me tell you what is good in the bill that is true that Dr. Dean forgot to tell people about this morning. Uh, we will cut costs. This legislation uh, will bend the cost curve. This legislation is not only deficit neutral, uh, it actually helps the deficit over the next uh, 10 years. It will provide accessible and affordable assurance to the 30 million, to 30 million Americans that currently uh, lack it. And then let's go through some of the insurance reforms. The insurance market reforms will prohibit abuses such as denying coverage for pre-existing conditions, charging exorbitant premiums based on gender, age, or health status, dropping coverage when people are sick, and imposing lifetime bans, uh, lifetime limits on benefits. Uh, consumer rights are enhanced by requiring insurers to provide effective appeals procedures, uh, including outside independent review uh, of uh, health, uh, health appeals. And the new insurance exchange will reduce premium increases by lowering administrative costs. Um, you know, I, I think if you talk to uh, members of the Senate that represent a similar viewpoint uh, in the political spectrum that Howard Dean does, uh, they just seem to disagree uh, as much with, with Howard Dean as, uh, as I think we would. Uh, I think they've been pretty clear on that. Yes, ma'am. Back on climate change, and speaking with officials in Copenhagen, they're saying that this really is kind of crunch time and that the Chinese today uh, were not willing to even see a, the text of, of a possible agreement, that they are being somewhat obstructionist. Mm -hmm. Is there any carrots or sticks that the administration is willing to offer the Chinese or is talking with the Chinese in well, terms of make, moving this well, forward? We've moved, remember, we've moved the Chinese forward to the point where uh, it was unclear a few weeks ago whether they would even offer a target. They've offered a strong target on re the reduction in carbon intensity uh, for their economy. It was unclear whether they'd even attend. Uh, we know they're going to attend. We have very specific concerns, uh, and I think they're fairly common sense. I think the American people, and quite frankly anybody in the world could understand, if we're going to enter into an operational agreement. We have to understand and be able to determine whether each of the people involved in that operational agreement is living up to the aspects of that agreement. Uh, 
by finding out through transparency whether each of us is keeping up our end of the bargain. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's part of what's at stake here. Uh, I think uh, if people are serious about coming to an agreement, and I know the President is, then uh, I think taking up and approving a common sense measure like transparency uh, is a, a pretty simple way of uh, moving past uh, what some have said is a big hurdle. You're making progress on that, or did the Chinese still seem to be pushing back? You know, I, I, again, I think it's a very common sense thing. Uh, I think the president strongly believes that uh, we have to have that in there in order to make sure that an agreement uh, is enforceable. And on another, just on another topic, the uh, Japanese uh, have this uh, cash for clunkers program that is similar to our own, and it doesn't include imports from American cars. There are some who are complaining. Uh, Ford, GM, Chrysler saying that this is uh, discrimination and it's not fair. Does the administration agree? Is I, I, have, I have not seen those comments. I'd be happy to have somebody take a look at it and, and ensure that whatever program they're doing is uh, comports with uh, uh, World Trade Organization regulations. Can you follow on Copenhagen, please? Yeah. Uh, Robert, uh, the eyes of the globe will be on India and China in Copenhagen, and since the President is going there and the Prime Minister of India will be also there among other leaders. Uh, when the Pr Prime Minister of India was here at the White House last month, do you think the President had any agreement or any uh, assurance from India what India will do or what U.S. wants from India or what you think two leaders will do in uh, Copenhagen? Well, look, uh, well, I think that what, uh, again, uh, we saw similar actions taken by the Indians as were taken by the Chinese in the lead up to this. Uh, a target, uh, again, that was unclear whether they would enunciate prior to going to Copenhagen to re for a reduction in the carbon intensity of their economy. Uh, a specific um, commitment to attend the conference and to try to seek a solution for those issues. Uh, I think uh, I, I think it's important that uh, I think the President and his team believe that without diplomacy and leadership in this, uh, we might not be at this point. The President has worked hard to get an agreement uh, and uh, certainly hopes that we leave Copenhagen having made that progress. Was there, was there any commitment during the, the meeting here at the White House from uh, India? Well, I, I, other than to work, try to work constructively uh, toward an agreement, uh, th nothing was locked in there. No. May I follow up on carbon intensity? Carbon? Sure. Um, the Bush administration was widely criticized for trying to meet its goals um, using intensity mm -hmm. versus um, just overall greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wondered why um, you are putting this in terms of greenhouse gas intensity, because basically. Well, that's the way their their that's the way their commitments came. I, I bought it. I have not, uh, uh, I have not seen what the criticism was for, uh, for the Bush administration using the term carbon intensity. So Sorry, I, but I basically it means that it, it could mean that you're actually meeting the intensity goal, but you're not meeting. It, it could mean you're not actually meeting the overall goal if it's not measured. If it's measured another way. Well, I, I think what what the administration wants to have happen. Uh, to reiterate my point is uh, if you set a goal but you can't look transparently into figuring out whether somebody is meeting that goal, uh, then you have an unenforceable, non-verifiable quote-unquote agreement. The President believes that if we're going to make progress, uh, it, we have to do more than just put a series of goals on a piece of paper. We have to also have a mechanism in that paper to ensure that transparency uh, allows us to verify what each nation is doing. Uh, it's, I think, a fairly common sense uh, principle that we believe uh, should be factored into uh, to any uh, approved agreement. Yes, ma'am. Why did the President throw in the towel on public option and Medicare? And one question, Nate, you see any connection on the suicide bombing in Central Asia. Does our presence mean anything about, I mean, have a connection? 
uh, in Central Asia, uh, which bombings? Several countries, the suicide bombings. Uh, I'd check with NSC if we have anything on that. In terms of the first one, Helen, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, we have seen, you know, we've, we've, we're, we're trying to get a piece of legislation through the Senate. Uh, the Republicans are filibustering, and any solution is going to require uh, 60 votes to go forward. Do I wish there were more uh, on the Republican side except a few uh, working with the administration to try to figure out how to solve one of the most complex? Uh, Why can't he get his own party? Well, uh, because there's a difference of opinion even in his own party about how to move forward. There's uh, differences in political perspective. There's differences in who people represent. Uh, the president is not often provided choices of... Uh, uh, that don't include having to get something through Congress. You could have let a filibuster go through. I'm sorry? Let them filibuster. Uh, well, if we did that, Helen, we wouldn't have health care. Uh, if you can't get 60 votes to move forward on the bill, uh, then the bill goes away. Uh, but don't quote me, don't quote the president, quote many on Capitol Hill that believe, as I just told Jake, there is far more in this bill uh, to like and to love than there is to oppose this bill. The notion that we would go, the notion that the best step forward for health care is to kill the process we're on uh, would simply do damage to what many people, including Dr. Dean, have worked uh, many, many years for. Uh, no, no, pre, but pre-existing, changing pre-existing conditions and the way insurance companies deal with that is in this legislation, as is a path to get 30 million currently uncovered Americans covered by health insurance reform, uh, lowering premiums for families and businesses, cutting costs for the government in terms of Medicare and Medicaid, dealing with the deficit by making that fiscal picture better. All of those things are what the president laid out in front of the Senate. Quite frankly, that's all. Those are many of the things that uh, that people have campaigned on for a long time. I said this yesterday. See if this sounds familiar. In 2004, a, Senate, a, a presidential candidate wanted to add to the existing health insurance system of our country, which is private sector and employer based, uh, those that are currently uninsured, uh, and ensure that they have accessible, affordable coverage. That's what Dr. Dean campaigned on in 2003 and 2004. That's what this bill will do. Except, as I said yesterday, there's two differences in what Dr. Dean was doing in 2004 and what President Obama is doing in 2009. One, more people are uninsured and more people are losing their coverages because business can't afford it. Secondly, we actually deal with costs. Change his mind and expand. That right and. I, get, I would ask Dr. Dean, is it, how better do you address those that don't have insurance? Passing a bill that covers 30 million that don't currently have it, or killing a bill? I don't think any rational person would say killing a bill makes a whole lot of sense at this point. There are a lot of people left out. So is he irrational? Uh, I, I, I can't tell what his motives are, to be honest with you, Chip, but I, I will tell you what he campaigned for in 2004 uh, is, is what the president is doing, except what this bill includes are insurance reforms that weren't addressed then, the patient's bill of rights, <laughs> in many ways that Democrats uh, spent a lot of time in the late 90s working on, are, are contained in this. Uh, we deal with costs, we lower premiums for families, and we deal with the fiscal situation. So it's what he campaigned for in 2003 and 2004 plus. Does the president get his frustrated as you sound when people like uh, Dean say things like this? Well, I, I mean, again, I think if you, if you go through the transcript of the interview, there's a, I, I think there are any number of instances where, to, where, where I, what, what is being said about this legislation, which is nothing new, we've been dealing with this for months, isn't... Dean, though, no, no, I understand, but, I'm, but I, what I'm referring to is... think it's not worth it. Well, who? Well, right, but understand, but understand, uh, Senator Harkin, who shares many of the political views that Howard Dean has, supports the bill. Sherrod Brown, uh, many other progressives in the they caucus, have to compromise. They have no because they understand that passing a bill uh, 
covering 30 million Americans that don't have health insurance uh, is a giant step forward. On another topic, does the president, is the president comfortable with Citigroup and perhaps others getting massive tax breaks uh, as they uh, pay back their bailout funds? Well, I, I would encourage you to talk to the Treasury Department and the IRS uh, and read a number of the stories that were written about this. This is the entire purpose of the law that you're talking about uh, was written in the 80s to prevent uh, a private company or an investor from evading taxes uh, in owning a profitable company and then in purchasing one that was losing money uh, in order to take significant, to use those significant tax losses uh, to lower its own tax rate, right? What prevented uh, uh, two private corporations uh, uh, or corporate raiders from doing that with two private corporations. Uh, uh, that's uh, obviously in this case, uh, the United States government is not a, uh, is not a private corporation. Uh, but still, if the IRS and the Treasury Department had not acted, these companies would be paying no, no, but billions, I'm this, Citigroup would be paying billions more in taxes. By definition, that's a tax under the transit. But again, this was a law that wasn't written uh, as the United States being uh, a member of the private sector. Nobody's, nobody's certainly held that. And I don't think it makes any sense to pu punish a company that has lost money in its, uh, for its tax purposes, as Citi has, uh, by discounting uh, the use of those future losses. But there are lots of ordinary Americans who would say, hey, this tax law isn't fair, that's not the way it was intended, and they don't get the IRS to go in there and say, oh, well, we'll change it for no, you. No, no, you, we'll you, you, you don't, you're not understanding the issue. I'm understanding. No, I've no, read no, everything that's been written on it. And I, this I, is money I, that, <laughs> this is money, you this is money that, that Citigroup have. would have had to pay yes. had the IRS not changed the rule. Right, because the IRS, right. no, because the IRS decided not to treat the federal government as a private company. Do you think the federal government is a private company? The point is they no, no, no. changed asking, under the, the rule as it existed. Company? Citigroup would as have had to pay billions of dollars in taxes. As the law was written in the 1980s to present, prevent a corporate raider from taking a profitable private corporation, purchasing a corporation that was m losing massive amounts of money, right? Dumping the profits that you're making in that into one that's losing money and avoid paying taxes. That's a situation that doesn't exist in this case because the United States isn't a private corporation. It is still a fact that IRS changed the rule because in order to allow Citigroup to get Chip, billions of dollars more. I think if you more. go back and talk to Treasury and talk to the IRS, uh, so you and disagree with disagree. all the reports that this is a tax break for Citigroup. I, I disagree with the fact that this was uh, uh, somehow changed uh, in a way. Uh, in the way in which you're characterizing it. A tax yes. break for Citigroup. Uh, a tax breaks, uh, there are tax breaks in the law for companies that are losing money. That's been the tax law for quite some time. So are all the headlines wrong that say Citigroup is getting a tax break? Uh, Citigroup's losing money, they can use that against their taxes. That is, no. that's always been the case. Are all the headlines long, wrong that are saying Citigroup is getting a tax break? I would break use the same thing that you guys use with me. I don't write the headlines. You just, are they wrong? I, Can you just say? I, 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 would, I would just go back to Treasury. I, I think they can simplify what you don't understand. Well, I, I understand it, Robert, uh, and I'm asking you to tell me, do you think these headlines, a tax break for Citigroup with payback pay, pay, pay of bailout, that's what all the headlines again, are saying. The, are they the wrong? The law doesn't fit. The law was written for two private corporations so that a tax, so that a corporate raider, and this happened in the 80s, would buy one unprofitable corporation use their tax loss write-off to benefit the profits they're making under another corporation. The example doesn't fit because the United States isn't a private corporation. But is the president comfortable with this tax break or whatever you want to call it? The IRS made that decision uh, and it allows the Citigroup to pay back the United States the money that it was owed. Savannah. Uh, if the health care vote happens on Christmas Eve, as is reported possibly, would the president stay back in Hawaii and be in town for it? I don't know the answer to that. Do you think Dean is having an effect on your coalition of Democrats, no. his rhetoric? Is he irrelevant? I, that's not a question for me to answer. I don't think. He's irrelevant. I, I, I think if you, uh, I, I think if you look at what Tom Harkin and Sherrod Brown and others have said, I think they can point out the uh, the benefits of the legislation. Uh, again, 
I hearken back, no pun intended, to uh, yeah, <laughs> E-N, uh, to what Howard Dean ran on as President of the United States, to, or to be President of the United States. It was a bill that would uh, do in many ways what the President is proposing. I wonder, I mean, I, I can't imagine you'd waste your time talking about him if you didn't think he was having well, an effect. I don't effect. know if I would characterize Jake's question as a waste of time, but. <laughs> and I didn't, in fact. Um, on Iran. Well, I'm, I'm paying yeah. to answer questions whether or not they're a waste of time or not. Okay. Sorry. But you decide how long you answer, <laughs> how much time you take to answer. Well, okay, mo moving on. Uh, I, on Iran. What if I decide one of these is a waste of my time? Can I go on to that? <laughs> That's to, happened before. Can I go <laughs> no yeah. doubt it'll happen again. Yeah. Um, can I just go to the next part? Well, uh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. On Iran, this deadline is looming. Um, it's 14 days away to the end of the year. Is, are you ready to declare this engagement track <coughs> dead? And what is happening on the sanctions track? I mean, well, the sanctions. Are you specific about it? Well, the sanctions track, I, I think it's important to understand that, um, and I, I'm not trying to be flippant, oversimplify it, I don't think the ball's going to land in Times Square and there's going to be a dramatic declaration. Obviously, this is going to have to go through a security council that reconstitutes itself on the 1st of January. Um, but as I said yesterday to, to uh, Matt's question, the, the track of engagement uh, has led us to a point where we are now where our allies uh, in the coalition of the P5 plus one are united uh, in addressing what Iran has not lived up to. Um, we have uh, Russia prepared uh, to take steps. You have seen uh, the vote of the IEA Board of Governors in condemning the actions of the Iranians. I think there's no doubt that given this environment, um, uh, missile tests do nothing but undermine Iranian claims. Uh, I, they're not productive. Um, the Iranians still have the opportunity to live up to their responsibilities. If they don't, then time will run out uh, and we will move to the next step. Robert, can we follow on around? Mm -hmm. These missile tests, do you feel they're uh, an expression of internal infighting among the government of Iran? And I can't speak to why the Iranians test missiles. The letter President Obama gave to the North Koreans, did that have to do with the Iranian nuclear test or with parts from North Korea to Iran? No, the, uh, the, the President, uh, uh, without getting into the details of diplomatic correspondence, uh, the President's letter uh, to the North Koreans coincided with and was delivered by uh, uh, Mr. Bosworth, who was there to uh, get the North Koreans, who are isolated in a way that the Iranians will soon be from the international community based on their provocative actions, uh, to convince them to do what is in their interest, and that's come back to the table and ultimately live up to the agreements they signed uh, to give up. Uh, and to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. Uh, I think it's an example that uh, is in many ways analogous to the Iranian one. Jonathan. Can you tell us what is in the bill in the Senate right now, the health care bill in the Senate, that adds the choice and competition that the President is looking for? Uh, I'd say two things. One is the exchange, and, and two, uh, uh, the, uh, the provisions uh, for OPM to set up uh, a process similar to uh, what they've done with the federal uh, employees health benefits package. I mean, last week you said that the, the OPM provision and the Medicare buy-in were two pieces of the same puzzle. Now one of those pieces is gone. Does the president still believe that there is enough choice and competition? Yes, and again, I, 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 what I would have neglected to have given last week is the fact that you've got now 30 million Americans that will join a, a, a health insurance exchange and use the purchasing power of uh, 30 million rather than a small business, say, of 10, uh, uh, to be able to seek the best deal possible for, uh, uh, for, quality, uh, for quality coverage, for lower administrative costs, and for cheaper health care policies. Real quickly on Copenhagen, when we were in Ch in China, in Beijing, the joint statement from the president, <coughs> president Obama and President Hu 
had a section on transparency. In fact, you were touting that as a big breakthrough. So what happened between Beijing and now that transparency is, is back on the table? I'd, I'd ask President Hu. Yes, sir. Robert, can I try again on Chip's line of questioning? Mm -hmm. If a bank gets in trouble through its own bad judgment and recklessness mm -hmm. and is then bailed out through the generosity of the American people, does it deserve special tax breaks? It's not getting special tax breaks. What are they? Uh, first of all, I, I, if a company loses money, being able to write off that in the future uh, is part of our tax law. Uh, the treatment of this provision is different, as I said before, because the law was written in the 80s to prevent two private sector corporations and companies from being used for tax evading purposes. Okay? The United States government is not a private sector company. Well, that's so clear. Why did they have to change the rules? Because uh, uh, we, I, I don't think the if rules in 1980 and the laws in 1980 envisioned uh, some of the extraordinary assistance that the United States government would be handing out in 2008. Is Chip going to get audited? <laughs> <laughs> I like his wife too much. <laughs> just for just for anybody who's blogging, nobody gets audited based on the questions that they ask here. Just so Mark and I, so I don't get in trouble. I'm sure there's that, gosh, people just pulled down their blog posts on. Uh, no, okay, damn it. Um, you know, what does the president think of Senator McCain and Senator Cantwell's proposal to reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act to, you know, make sure there are no future bailouts? So sure. I, I, I have not talked to him specifically. I don't, uh, I have not uh, uh, seen what specifically of that they've proposed. I would say this. I think the president believes that what the House passed uh, uh, in terms of financial reform takes many of the necessary steps that the president sees uh, are important for ensuring uh, that the type of crisis that happened can't happen again and that we can address in ways um, potential uh, potential catastrophes to our economy in a way that won't harm others, meaning through resolution authority that would allow us to uh, deal with the problem uh, break things apart and deal with a problem without it uh, infecting larger parts of the economy. And I think that's something the President hopes will, will pass the Senate and come to his desk soon. Should this have been included in the House? Uh, I'd, I'd have to look through it and get a sense of when. The missile the Iranians tested today, is it one of those designed to be dealt with by the changed missile defense uh, the President announced in September? Anything new that you see there was the test at all provocative? Well, I, 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 I think the test given the actions that uh, uh, and the, the given their actions recently on their nuclear program uh, is quite counterproductive to their proving that uh, uh, their their nuclear program is for peaceful means. Why? Given that uh, what I'm told uh, is that the missile tested today could not carry a nuclear warhead. They don't have one anyway. Well, I, I, I Again, I, I think the provocative nature of just testing, it, you, before you can light up an ICBM, you're going to have to go through uh, some technological uh, uh, gyrations to get you to that point. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, th there's, there's clear that this is not for satellite capabilities. Uh, and will then the test have an impact on the sanctions Push, and what is the status of that right now? Well, I, I, as I said to Savannah, it, we, we, we continue to work with uh, uh, with those in the P5 plus one to move that forward uh, and to develop uh, sanctions uh, that could be used uh, next year. Um, uh, what was the first part of your, the... Uh, whether the test will impact that. Um, it doesn't I, look, again, I think it is, I, I, I think when you're trying to, when you're trying to prove to the world uh, that you're taking steps that are, uh, uh, that you're trying to prove that your nuclear program uh, is, is indeed for peaceful power means and not for other provocative means, uh, I don't think it makes any sense to do what they did today. To go back to your first, first question, the, 
uh, as we have talked about missile defense in the past, uh, what we needed was a system that uh, uh, addressed uh, the idea of uh, multiple smaller missiles, uh, the type of technology which you see tested most frequently, uh, a system that is more able and uh, more quickly deployable to address that. Uh, that was one of the reasons that General Cartwright, the Joint Chiefs, and the Secretary of Defense recommended uh, we make the changes that were previously announced in our missile defense. So Scott. what was tested today was envisioned? Well, the type of which, uh, uh, the type of which, the, the type of threat in which uh, we are seeking to address uh, more readily through a more rapidly deployable missile defense system. Dirty bombs, they're not benign. Oh, I, I, I'm certainly not going to say that. I, of course, I mean, there's, you know, you're not, uh, they're not for satellites and they're not for fireworks. Uh, Speaker Pelosi said today that, uh, that she would not be asking members of her caucus to support the president's uh, war plan, that the president would be on his own mm -hmm. uh, in selling that. Could you comment on that? How does this affect the White House strategy going forward with Congress? Well, look, uh, uh, we will, uh, as the president started at West Point uh, and certainly continues in interviews and questions that he's asked, lay out why he believes the strategy he set forward uh, is the best uh, way possible in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, I think what he would say to uh, what he would say in response to a question like that is uh, the, we have a plan that uh, uh, rapidly increases our, uh, the number of our forces there in order to more quickly train an Afghan national security force uh, to deal with the momentum uh, of the Taliban. And address both of those instances so that in July 2011 we can begin transferring authority and control for security to the Afghans and begin to bring uh, our soldiers home. The president looked at obviously a number of options um, that he believed did not adequately uh, change the calculus uh, of what was currently going on in Afghanistan uh, and that the best way forward was to do this and I think the president uh, may not get the agreement of every member of Congress or every Democratic member of Congress, uh, but will certainly make the case for why uh, he believes uh, this is the best path forward. Is her position surprising to the White House? Uh, I, I'd have to look back at some of her previous statements in terms of, uh, uh, I, I think she's made statements in the past, and I, I hate to say this without having some of that stuff in front of me, uh, in opposition to adding more forces. Uh, as, I, as, quite frankly, a number of uh, members of Congress have made. Yeah. Um, House uh, progressives are concerned about the Senate uh, compromise, uh, to say the least. Is the President open to eventually adding back some more of a public insurance alternative to the bill, or does he think that well, would, would... See, I don't want to get ahead of... Uh, I don't want to get into the conference, uh, a conference procedure. I, 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 the President is working hard to get legislation out of the Senate uh, so that we can get to that point. Well, does he have any response to them? I mean, they're concerned right now. I mean, well, I, I, making a now. Yeah, I, I think our response is what I gave earlier, which is, uh, as many in the Senate have said, that represent very divergent political viewpoints within the Democratic caucus, that uh, this represents a huge step forward uh, for meaningful health care reform. Hoping you can really briefly, uh, Robert, you, we know about the phone call to Sarkozy and the others yesterday morning. Is the president still continuing to work the phones? Will he be yeah, I think tomorrow? the, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me. I think there uh, may be more calls uh, today to uh, countries uh, as part of the, the developing nations in the G77 um, as there were, uh, I think it was Monday, uh, with uh, Ethiopia and Bangladesh, uh, and we'll have a readout. Uh, after that call's done. Um, obviously, our negotiators there continue to work with uh, nations in Europe, uh, the larger developing nations, uh, and the G77 to try to come to some agreement. And it has been suggested already that maybe uh, the conference should be extended. Is the president open to that? Uh, I think the president leaves uh, on the 18th to come back. Uh, uh, I think that's, the, that's, that's our current uh, flight posture. <laughs> does he think, does he think but, the deadline will concentrate minds? 
<laughs> Look, I think it will. I mean, I, I, I think you've, you've seen in some ways people say that, uh, uh, God forbid, this is all that staff can do and some of this is just going to get hashed out when leaders of these countries get here to start hashing it out. And I, I don't, uh, uh, I think that's in many ways how some of this stuff happens. Uh, and I, I don't think that, uh, in all honesty, that'll be a lot different here. George. Uh, tonight, uh, some of the leaders of AFL-CIO and SEIU are meeting to talk about whether they should either oppose the health care bill in the Senate or scale back their, their support for it. How damaging would that be if they did it? And is anybody at the White House talking to them today? And well, I'm, I'm sure people at the White House and people on Capitol Hill and people in the uh, broader political community are talking to them. Uh, George, again, I, I, I think that uh, I think there has been a lot of focus in the last 12 to 24 hours by certain individuals and others about what they don't like in the bill. Uh, I think if one steps back and looks at what is in the bill and what there is to greatly like in the bill because it represents a great step forward in health care reform, I think they'll find many of the things that I've listed and many of the principles met that the President outlined in front of Congress. Uh, again. I don't think it makes any sense to think that we're going to move forward on health care by not supporting uh, moving this process forward. Robert, can, you, can you address, um, just related but broadly, uh, growing concern on the left that the president feels he can take his base for granted? Is that true? Does the president? I, I don't know. What, I, based on what? Well, there's um, a lot of activity on the uh, on the left-leaning blogs, on TV. There's a posting. Did you read that at the Washington Times? <laughs> they, they let me read whatever I want. Good to know. For now. Is that a real concern that there that there are people on the left who feel the president president believes he can take their support uh, I, for granted? I, I, uh, again, the, the president the president is dealing with uh, the legislative process. Matt, we, I said this earlier. I said this earlier in the week. We don't get. Uh, we don't, the president isn't generally pre prevented with uh, either or options that are, uh, that always include everything he wants. That's part of the legislative process. Uh, we would not be, we would not be where we were. We would not be spending, uh, what, what month are we in on health care reform? Uh, uh, what, where, what, what? 40 years. 70 years. Well, but I mean, in, in, in this term. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this for the eighth or ninth month in a row if it weren't for the president's leadership. Right, but not just with respect to health care, but as Scott was asking you about the decision of, on Afghanistan, on gay rights, on a, a number of these issues, there is, I think, a growing concern that the president feels that the, that the, the base is with him and that he doesn't have to be worried about that. I, I'd, I've never heard the president say, Oh, don't, I don't have to worry about that because these people are going to be with me. I, 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 I've been with the president for six years and I've never heard him say something uh, as silly as that. I, I don't think anybody would, uh, would say that. The, the president, but I want to be clear, the president's not making political decisions or not making policy decisions based on uh, a lot of uh, weighing back and forth on uh, different political ideas. Uh, I, I, the president's not making decisions about our national security based on uh, based on looking at uh, uh, looking at this through the political lens. Kristen, Robert, the president met with the NASA administrator today to talk about the Constellation program. Mm -hmm. Are the two in agreement now about what to do with that program going forward? Have the decision? I, I have not uh, gotten a readout from the meeting, but uh, uh, we'll try to see what uh, what has come of uh, of their discussions. I don't know that we'll have a ton on this today. Obviously, the, the budget here is being put together uh, for next year. I know the most previous budget that was passed represented an increase in spending for NASA, uh, and the President believes that uh, NASA plays a, a vital role uh, going forward. Has that decision been reached yet in the two we're talking about? Uh, I, 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 I mean, I, even like prior to the meeting, is the decision about I, I want to get, Let me get a readout from the meeting before I, David. Uh, any prospects for a uh, in town? <laughs> Violet in Copenhagen to talk I about think these that, uh, uh, I think China is being represented uh, uh, by when and not by who. Yeah. 
Right. But so a win jet bylet. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a bylet schedule or not. I'll certainly check through the schedule. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.